Welcome to another video on Kubernetes. In today's video, we're going to be covering Kubernetes probes. Probes not only help you keep your applications up and running, but give you much higher availability. This is automatic restarts of your application during failure, automatic removal of traffic on your web applications during network dips, and uninterrupted traffic during rolling deployments. But first, most of you are not subscribed. So if you find this video helpful, be sure to smash that subscribe button and like the video. And without further ado, let's go. In this video, we'll create a client application that we will use to generate HTTP traffic as well as a server, which will be the application that receives the traffic and where we will be adding Kubernetes probes. Now, if we take a look at our GitHub repo, we have a Kubernetes folder and in there we have a probes folder with a readme. And this is our introduction to Kubernetes probes. And the first thing we're going to do is create a Kubernetes cluster. And for this, we'll use a utility called Kind. Now, Kind is an amazing utility for running lightweight, small Kubernetes clusters in Docker containers that we can use for testing. And the beauty about this is we can quickly spin up Kubernetes clusters as many as we like and throw them away when we're done. So the first thing I'm going to do is change directory to the Kubernetes probes folder where all the examples are that we're going to be looking at today. And then I'm going to create a cluster saying kind create cluster, call it demo, and I'm going to run Kubernetes 1.28. I go ahead and run that and that will create a Kubernetes cluster that we can use for testing. I can then do kubectl get nodes and we have a one node Kubernetes cluster up and running. And now that we have our cluster up and running to demo these probes, what we're going to need is a client and a server. So here I have a client.yaml and a server.yaml. And if we take a look at our clients, it's a very simple deployment. It is running one replica. The name of the deployment is client and it's going to run one container with Alpine inside it and it's going to sleep. This will give us a lightweight container that we can SSH into and make web requests. So this is our client. Then in our GitHub repo, we also have server.yaml. And this is our server application. This is the web application that's going to be taking the web request where we'll be testing our health probes. Now, don't read too much into this because we'll take a look at it in a bit. But this is a simple deployment called server. It has one replica. It's going to be running one container and this container image will have Python inside and this will install and run a web server. And basically, it's going to run some custom Python code. The custom Python code is defined in a config map. Down here, we have the config map with the Python code inside. This is just going to return some data when we make a web request to it. And then we have a Kubernetes service to expose this pod. So to keep these things simple, all we're doing is create a client that will generate web traffic and have a server that will receive the traffic to showcase the health probes. And I did not want to write a complicated application. So in this demo, we'll just use a simple Python script that takes a web request and returns some data from a text file. So let's deploy the client and the server to our Kubernetes cluster. So it's very simple as per our instruction here. We're just going to say kubectl apply minus f and apply the client YAML file. So I go ahead and apply that. And then what I'm going to do as well is apply the server.yaml file. So I go to my terminal and apply the server.yaml. I can do kubectl get pods and we can see our clients is there as well as our server. Now to show you this in action, what we want to do is go inside of our client pod. So do kubectl get pods, grab the name and do kubectl exec IT and go inside the client app. Then what we're going to do is say apk add curl. So we're just going to install curl in our client app. And once we have curl, we're going to run a simple while loop for every second. It's going to make a web request to our server. So it's going to basically do one request every second. And this is going to be ongoing. So we can basically simulate a server receiving traffic constantly. And more importantly, what we can do is we can monitor these messages to make sure there is no interruption to the traffic. So this is to simulate a production like environment where you have a server that's constantly receiving traffic. So while we see all these OK messages and while our server is taking traffic, what I'm going to do is pretend to make a change. So I'm going to go to our server.yaml and here where we have version two, 
I'm just going to bump this up to version three. So I'm going to go ahead and save that YAML and I'm going to apply the server change. Now notice what happens when I apply the server change, Kubernetes will start rolling out new pods and look what happens to my customer traffic. When I run that, we can immediately see some interruptions. And then after some time, it fixes itself. This is because new pods came out and the old pods were deleted. And during this time, the new pods were not ready to take traffic. And it's important to understand how Kubernetes determines when a pod is ready to take traffic. Now, when pods start, they generally go through different phases from pending to creating to running. And as soon as a pod goes into a running status, that is when the Kubernetes service in front of the pod will start sending traffic to that pod. And most web applications are not ready to take traffic immediately when the process goes into a running state because a web server needs to initialize. So this brings us to readiness probes. Now in our Kubernetes cluster, we have a client and we have a server which is taking traffic. Now, when we do a deployment and Kubernetes runs out new pods, as soon as these pods goes into a running status, traffic is being sent to that pod. And for some time, you will notice the traffic will fail because that pod is not ready to accept the traffic. Until that pod is ready, it will start working. Now with a readiness probe in place, when we have our applications working, when you roll out a new pod and it goes into a running state, Kubernetes will actually check out that pod and start making requests to it. And with a readiness probe, once this traffic starts working, then only will Kubernetes start sending traffic, meaning our customers are not impacted. So readiness probes are very simple concepts to understand. It's a small bit of YAML that we need to add to our pod. So first thing is we say HTTP get on a path and the port to make the request to. And here we say initial delay seconds. This is the estimate number of seconds that we think our pod will take. So if we know we're going to need like two, three or four seconds, we can set this number accordingly. The next number is period seconds. That is the interval at which we want to receive requests. So in our case, every three seconds, we'll let Kubernetes make a request to us. The failure threshold is a very important value. This is the number of failures Kubernetes can Kubernetes can accept before marking the pod as not ready. This is an important concept we'll see later when automatically removing traffic from a pod during a network dip. So in our case here, what's going to happen is Kubernetes is going to wait three seconds, then it's going to start making one request every three seconds. As soon as it gets a successful request, it'll mark our pod as ready and it'll start receiving traffic. So let's go ahead and grab this go to our server.yaml and we're going to add this to the container spec. So I add that like so, and then I'm going to go ahead and apply that change. So I'm going to say kubectl apply and notice this time we don't get any interruption. Notice that we do not get any interruption. Messages are still okay. And if I do kubectl get pods, notice we have a new pod. It is ready to take traffic and the old one is terminating. So there's no interruption during our deployment. So readiness probes may help you during rolling deployments to make sure that you're not getting any interruption to traffic. Another cool thing about readiness probes is that they're not only effective during the startup of the application or the creation of the pod, but that they remain active during the pod's life cycle. Meaning that for any reason, if there's a network hiccup or our web server becomes flaky, Kubernetes will automatically remove traffic from that pod and it'll put the traffic back onto that pod as soon as the probe starts responding. This is very useful in situations where we may not want to kill the pod, but when there's some sort of network turbulence, we can direct traffic to other pods. Now, the way I've written my application to demo this is that our application will basically just open a file called data.txt and return the content. So to simulate a hiccup, all I need to do is remove that file. So let's pretend the web application starts hanging and no longer responds. So I go ahead and remove that file and notice that our web traffic is now interrupted and failing. Now notice that this is not a temporary hiccup. It's going to keep failing forever. And this is because we're only running one instance of our pod. So this is very important for highly available applications. You need to run more than one pod. So let's fix that by running two replicas. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to say kubectl scale our deployment and put replicas as two. And when we do get pods, notice that they are not ready. So one of them is not ready. The new one's not ready yet. But as soon as that new one becomes ready, see one out of one, the traffic starts fixing itself. 
So now Kubernetes is sending all of the traffic to the ready pod and the one that is flaky or that's experiencing some hiccup is not receiving traffic because it's marked as not ready. So our readiness probe is kicked in and ready for action. And if I go back to our pod now and I fix it, so I say kubectl exec and let's put that file back to pretend that the network issue is resolved. So I go ahead and run that command. Now notice all our pods on the server side is now ready and no interruption to the traffic. Now liveness probes are used in situations where our application cannot recover without manual intervention. So let's say there's an instability in your code or your web server or the framework or programming framework you're running on like .NET Runtime, Python Flask, Node.js Express has some kind of bug or hiccup and your application can no longer serve requests without being rebooted. So this is a situation similar to the traditional world where someone has to wake up at night and log in SSH to a server and reboot the thing. So this is where liveness probes comes in and automates that for us. So to set up a liveliness probe, what we need to do is take a look at our YAML. So a liveliness probe looks almost identical to a readiness probe. It's just called liveness probe and it has the same settings. We can say HTTP get, the path we want to call, the port we want to connect to. We have initial delay seconds, so we can keep this to a lower or a higher number. The period seconds at which to check it. Now the cool thing here is you can actually tweak these numbers because we have a readiness probe, which will remove the traffic. We can actually make this timing a little bit longer so we can bump up the period seconds to four and we can even increase the failure thresholds because we know that our readiness probe will remove the traffic from a faulty pod we don't want to keep restarting our pods so we keep this number slightly higher so if there's a real failure and the network does not recover kubernetes will kill the pod so let's go ahead and take this yaml here and go and update our deployment so just below our readiness probe i've added our liveliness probe and then to roll that out, all I'm going to do is say kubectl apply, and I'm going to apply the YAML file. Go ahead and configure my liveliness probe, and that will roll out new pods. It'll create new pods and terminate the old pods. And notice our traffic is not being interrupted because we have that readiness probe. And then because our YAML file just has one replica, I'm going to go ahead and just scale our replicas to two. And then I'm just going to make sure we have two pods running by saying kubectl get pods. Notice we have two of them running running and ready to go and they're both taking traffic now and now to simulate a failure what we can do is go ahead and run that exec command again to delete the file and take a close look what's about to happen so we mark one pod is not ready notice that our traffic gets interrupted slightly until the readiness probe detects that the, there's an issue in the pod. So it's detected there now. So one of them has become not ready. So now our service has automatically stabilized, right? So Kubernetes is rolling out the traffic to the pod, which is ready, and it's removed the traffic from the other pod. And if we give this some time, our liveliness probe is gonna detect that this server is not recovering. So this pod is remaining as not ready. And instead of us manually having to fix it, Kubernetes will fix it for us. Now this may take some time because our failure threshold is quite high, but for this time, the traffic is directed to the pod that's working. And notice here, if I do kubectl get pods, eventually Kubernetes has gone and restarted that pod. So it restarted it and now it's ready. So it's automatically fixed the issue for us with the liveness probe. And the final probe to know about is called a startup probe. Now startup probes are specifically designed for slow starting applications. And it's important to understand the minor differences between a startup probe and a readiness probe. Because in our demo, our Python application was fairly slow at starting up, right? And we saw that the readiness probe can actually act as a startup probe because it has the initial delay seconds. And in our case, we do not really need a startup probe. But there could be a situation, like especially in legacy applications, like with Windows container apps, which may take 5 to 10 minutes for a container to create and an application inside to start up. This is where startup probes can be really useful because the timing matters because it's important that we do not want to increase the timing in the readiness probe. That's why it's better to have a startup probe in this situation. So startup probes is all about protecting slow starting containers with their startup. Sometimes you have to deal with legacy applications that might require an additional startup time on their first initialization. And here it can be really tricky to use a liveness or a readiness probe because 
because remember in our application readiness probe was also used to remove the traffic when there is a network hiccup and with a readiness probe we want to remove the traffic as soon as there is a hiccup so we don't want to have the numbers too little but also not too large so if we take a closer look at the startup probe you can see that it has very high period seconds and very high failure thresholds and it also allows you to set the initial delay seconds to really high this means that the startup probe can have really high settings and allow like five to ten minutes for that container to start up and then once the container is running the readiness and liveliness probe can take over it's also important to notice that the startup probe only happens during container startup whereas the liveness and the readiness probe always run during the pods life cycle so hopefully this helps you understand the basics of liveness readiness and startup probes in kubernetes and allows you to configure your app for much higher availability and resilience now let me know what other sort of kubernetes topics you'd like to see in the future and if you like the video be sure to like subscribe and hit the bell so you know when i upload next and if you want to support the channel even further be sure to hit the patreon link down below or the join button to become a youtube member and as always thanks for watching and until next time peace